Good evening and welcome to Abstractors. Tonight, Cubism. Cubism was a movement pioneered by, mainly by two artists, Pablo Picasso and Brack. It came about in 1906-1907 and primarily in Paris. It, it changed the art world as it, it completely, uh, again, because of photography at the time and, and artists were looking at new things and new ways to express themselves, Cubism tried to analyze an object or whatever rather from just one viewpoint, and this is the main thing, they tried saying, okay, let's, let's look at the objects from various uh, different viewpoints and juxtapose them all together into one same painting. In order to more or less show what cubism is like, I'm going to attempt the same thing using one, one of my emblematic rock paintings and combine all the different views of the rock into one cubist style uh, painting. As you can see, I've prepared myself with uh, visual aids as always. Some of them are sketches that I've done in the past. Um, others are postcards of Gibraltar. All the different views I've managed to get hold of and, and quickly print out to, to have ready for today. Some are very old, anything. At the end of the day, it's to show all the different views what makes Gibraltar. First of all, I'm going to transpose one of my basic sketches that I've tried to eliminate as much detail as possible just to leave it in its basic geometric forms, which is, again is where, where the word cubis or cubism came from. Um, a painter called Cezanne, whom I've mentioned before, actually started play around with, playing around with the idea of, of converting subjects into its basic forms, cubes, cylinders, uh, spheres, uh, and so on, which is why the term was, was coined as cubism. Okay, I'm going to start transposing. This is going to take a while, but I'm going to start with one of the views. Uh, like I said before, cubism, I mean, uses loads of different views because basically, when you look at an object, any object, really, one view will not define the object as a whole. Okay, we will then understand that that view is one of the angles. Again, that's what photography does. But basically, we already have in our psyche, in our minds, an idea of what that object looks like, and we've gone all around it. Say a guitar, or any instrument, or any, any, any object. We know what it looks like in 360 degrees. Cubism tried to do that. Tried to show all the different angles and mix them up together, or, or, or combine them in one painting, one two-dimensional uh, 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 screen, or canvas. Again. I'm going to very quickly, because I want to destroy this, I'm, I'm just going to start marking, and even as I do that, I'm already seeing shapes. You see, that is quite, uh, uh, it's like a, a, a triangle, triangular shape, and there is an element of abstraction. I, I would even say that cubism was probably one of the first examples of pure abstraction. <laughs> This I'm going to cover with another view of the rock, so eventually I won't even see what, what's there or that it's a rock. But the idea is that all the different views show a more complete, comprehensive view of what the rock is really like. And funnily enough, the rock is one of the shapes that more distinctly shows that depending on where you look at it from, it's completely different. If you look at the rock from, say, La Linea, it's a totally different view as if you look at it from uh, uh, Europa Point or that area. So, you know, it changes constantly. But we still recognize them. We still recognize, especially the north view, which I've done in all my paintings, is a very characteristic view of the rock. As always, I'm being very free. I'm not thinking too much about the end result. I have a vague idea, and that's what I've always said about painting. You never know where you're gonna end up. You just have an idea. The 
first thing we're going to do now is fix that again what I said last week uh, hairspray will do the job nicely so I get the lines in place and then I'm going to quickly paint over the lines and maybe emphasize some of the forms Cezanne who for me is one of the or is the 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 predecessor predecessor of cubism he did a painting repeatedly Mount Saint Victoire he did it again and again and he was looking at form and what makes a, a mountain or that mountain what it is I'm going to try and attempt the same thing so in the first sketch I've done I'm going to cover it with paint now and try and depict certain shapes that are very emblematic very typical of this view of the rock then it will be destroyed and covered by another view okay the as you see I've covered the canvas with a sort of ochre brownie ochre uh, that's for two reasons one is to like I always do to get rid of the white which is highly disturbing uh, in, in you know when you start painting but secondly uh, there's two types two fundamental different types of cubism early 1907 the first uh, attempts at it is coined as analytical cubism which stems from like I said earlier on from Cezanne and it, it endeavors to to primarily look at form, hidden form, and convert them into basic shapes. These analytical cubists, and this is what I'm going to try and do now, basically uh, uh, did not need color. They realized that color for them was completely unnecessary. So they were more concerned, like I said, look, this is what I'm working on now, try and create the idea of form. And, and these analytical cubists, concentrated mainly on that so they they didn't really use color the second type came later on and that's where the third main cubist artist one one gris uh, had more to do with the movement is called synthetic uh, 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 cubism and basically what it was it extended the concept of cubism into uh, or rather added to it collage, uh, lettering. Picasso was the first one to actually incorporate lettering into a painting and then cut out of a, a newspaper and print. And, and so that, that was a later stage of, of, of cubism and it's called, like I said before, synthetic cubism. Right now I'm trying to look at form, shapes and try and, and simplify them into distinct you know uh, geometric shapes as it were I'm inventing as I go along a lot of it I mean I'm not even looking at my my visual aid primarily because it's hard to hold the palette the brush and the bit and the, the the aid and it's not that important right now and all this will probably be destroyed in the end so it won't make much difference you see I'm just looking at shapes as we go along Shapes that are formed in nature. For instance, this bit over here, if you can zoom in there, that is clearly for me a cone. So let's start giving it the, the shape of a cone. Over here, I'm getting like cylindrical or, or um, triangular, not spheres, but cones again. Using simply using black, and now after that I'll, I'll start using the basic white as well. You start emphasizing these forms. 